Forum Borealis Paradigm Expansion Greetings from the North, citizens of the globe. Welcome. Today we continue our series on relationships. And this one goes out to all your bros out there. Although, as always, when one polarity is examined, it automatically also enlightens the other. You know, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, the first real spark of a man's movement was lit, being dormant in a vacuum ever since the 60s and 70s, when women woke up and a whole industry aimed at our mothers, sisters, daughters and girlfriends emerged and blossomed. While the woman was out realizing and finding herself, the man was confined to slacking at the sofa with a bear in front of the ball game growing fat, lazy and lost to himself and to what he could become while chewing like popcorn toxic masculinity ideals a la Homer Simpson. Simultaneously, women were giving up on men who all seemed like lost causes. But... The pendulum could only swing so far before turning. And indeed, something interesting was brewing in the underground of the gender game. All over the big cities, faint whispers of new messiahs, gurus and saviors, dim sightings of a catch here and there, signs of a new kind of man had entered the scene. And it took a while before the male transforming machine reached mainstream headlines, with books like The Art of Seduction, The Game, TV shows like The Pickup Artist and Key to the VIP, movies like Hitch, Swingers, Don Juan de Marco, and a million lifestyle coaches entering the scene like pimps on speed. Sure, in the beginning it was like a Klondike rush, as soon as enough boys, emphasize on boys, discovered that they did not have to accept their lot as unsatisfied needy drones, but could actually claim the crown to the kingdom in their own right. The technique-based systems flourished and the dating scene was flooded with robots of various levels, experimenting with their manuals on the abundant herds of prey, scoring a number, a date or even a one-night stand. Given that it takes practice to become a master and a master seducer never gets busted, all the feeble newbie attempts soon enough gave the movement a bad rap. Combined with the fact that many only wanted to use this newly found superpower to get laid. But how long was Adam in paradise? Eventually, tweaks and adjustments had to be implemented because after a million horny guys says and does the same kind of things, it gets old. Women caught on and put up their guard. This forced the players to step up. The new level of challenge was a blessing in disguise because more and more men now discovered something deeper, something more genuine and everlasting. You did not have to rely on cheesy yet effective routines. You could actually become a natural, one of those whence all tips and tricks stem from. It was all about transforming yourself, becoming a man, and for the man to be born the boy must die. So the movement was maturing, stepping out of its pimple teenage face and into something more tangible, something more sustainable and real. It is true that even today immature boys and neophytes will be drawn to the shortcut manipulation system that Neil Strauss exposed in his book, but on the inside they are still immature boys, and even the most sluggish women will eventually smoke them out, if he stays around for more than a night or two. Besides, those men who indeed grew tired of sleeping around and or sought something more permanent, are faced with a need for precisely permanence. They don't just want to appear like kings, they also want to enjoy sitting on the throne. So this movement, call it what you want, PUA, seduction, neo-romance, life coaching, attraction transformers, has penetrated deeper into the nature of the Casanova 
and found where the path blends with destiny, spirituality, indeed existentialism, so that it's not just a rite of passage anymore, it's the entire journey of the masculine quest. These two waves, let's call them the manipulation approach and the growth approach, has existed parallel for many years now, often conflating. And ironically, even women have joined this bandwagon, either to help men or to apply the same principles to help their sisters. Indeed, many of the dating coaches are pitching their solutions to both genders and some specializing in women only. So when everyone is upping their game, you would not want to be left behind. And yet, we see that this lifestyle wave is suffering from plenty of ignorance and bias, much of it warranted, mind you, as anything turning commercial also attracts conmen, wannabes, the pathological, the extreme, etc. But still, the baby ought not be thrown out with the bathwater. Add to this that the pendulum is swinging again, and we see new trends arising like the Megto men going their own way, which does not liberate neither men nor women, but escalates the alienation between the genders and renders men as helpless incels. Now, enter our guest of today. He is what I would call a true liberator, who has emphasized the growth aspect of this movement. Rather than teaching how to behave attractive per the manipulators, he teaches how to be attractive like the naturals. I am speaking of Jonathan Zan Perion who was one of the early members of the seduction community, yet always a strong advocate of natural game. Without coaches like him, men would be sucked into the world of manipulative, technique-based pickup artistry and perhaps never learn to really love ourselves and our women. He shows you how to be the Don Juan romancer with a natural approach to dating instead of the hyperactive drunk nightclub PUA who rely on scripts, canned lines and all the other temporary crutches that make flirting a pain in the neck. The term natural game is the seduction art without such techniques, instead using a well-developed personality and confidence, focusing on being real and using natural charisma to become attractive. His is the true charmer's way of focusing on the magic of the woman in front of you, bringing out her passion and delight through fantasy and energy, with a healthy focus on love and sincerity in the pursuit. San Perion calls himself a student of women, and his relationship advisors are renowned for creating and keeping positive relationships between genders. Consequently, he has a solid following, even among women, who through his classes learn to become more intimate with men and develop a deeper understanding of their femininity. With his rich experience and deep passion for women, he offers an exceptional and sometimes diverging perspective to other coaches in the field. He's a firm believer that games are not needed and that the art of attraction relies on truth not pretense. No wonder he has been dubbed the modern-day Casanova and a seducer in the true classical sense of the word. Perion is a Canadian author, motivational speaker and life coach based in Romania, who used to live in the LA area, where the founding members of the PUA community mainly frequented. His contributions can be tracked back 20 years, as he was one of these original members of Mysteries launch in the early 2000s, before the release of, of Strauss' book, The Game. He was very active in private forums, providing some of the more mature advice. In 03, he launched Enlightenment Seduction, a company based upon a philosophy he describes as a more elegant, a more excellent, and a more enlightened way of interacting with women and moving through this world. In 04, he released his flagship product, the DVD series, The Way of the Natural, that lays the foundation of his Casanova-style teachings. In 05, he took on various speaking engagements around the world, and hit the road, accepting all invitations, wandering everywhere from Tokyo to Cape Town, from Panama to Spain. Same year, author Neil Strauss devotes an entire chapter to Zen in his New York Times bestseller. In 06, he set up the Ars Amorata, trading his masterpieces under the way of attraction. 
Its philosophy celebrates the art of seduction, the rebirth of romance, and a lifelong quest for beauty and adventure. From now on, he regularly travels the world, especially Eastern Europe, teaching men and women while running an actual game forum where those into this method discuss ideas, experience, and breakthroughs. In 08, he co-founded the Amorati Network of Men, where they, as proponent of natural game, advocate sincerity. The Amorati Brotherhood eventually grows to hundreds of members all over the world. Zan and partner Hans Komin travel everywhere together evangelizing and recruiting new members. From now on, Perion is a frequent speaker within PUA communities and his non-PUA lingo also prompts much media attention from dating magazines to news broadcasts. Consequently, he has been widely featured in the international press as a regular media commentator. His influence continues to extend beyond the community to enrich the lives of men and women across different continents. He's become extremely well known for his enlightened form of interaction between the sexes and pursuit of more exciting relationships through romance. In 10, Sam played himself in the Hollywood movie Let the Game Begin, starring Stephen Baldwin, Michael Madsen, Adam Rodriguez, and also in the comedy movie The Hunter of the same year. In 13, after 10 years of writing, San finally releases his book, The Alabaster Girl, that we will discuss today. In 16, he releases a 50-episode YouTube video series called In Search of the Alabaster Girl, which is a coffee-fueled roundtable discussion between bros about the book. He continues with various media appearances, too many to be named here. Suffice to say, Zan remains an internationally lauded writer a professional speaker and continues to provide seminars and workshops through his company and publishes literature and multimedia about relationship seduction and dating. David D'Angelo has called him an example of a true natural. Mystery has proclaimed, I want to be like Zan. He has been called a player, a beauty seeker, a relationship guru, a hopeless romantic, a pickup artist, a dating coach. The media has even called him the world's greatest seducer. But according to himself, it is far more simple, in his own words. I am immensely curious, charmed and fascinated, on an adventure, itinerant, having enormous fun in life, never needy, never attached to the outcome, never serious but always sincere. I am a lover of beauty in all its forms, art in all its forms. I am a lover of life and its immense potential. I am a lover of women. And if your heart is sincere, you will understand exactly what that means. I am the seducer seduced. Yes, that's what I am. If you could see even one-tenth of the beauty I see in a woman, you too would be seduced. You too would live your life surrounded by boundless beauty and grace. If you truly love women and accept and understand them, They will let you walk among them. Welcome to Forum Borealis, son. Well, thank you. So I'm very pleased to have you on, son, because um, I've done this Mm -hmm. for years and I've started to notice um, sometimes it's crept up on me that I'm kind of feeling I'm, I'm going in the same track. I wouldn't call it boring, but I, I find myself going in circles sometimes. And for my own pleasure, uh, for my own experience, the best thing is when two things happen. One, I have a fresh new guest I never spoke with before. Mm-hmm. Check. Two, I take on a topic that I haven't explored sufficiently before. Check. So this makes me very excited to have you on. Great. Yeah. Glad to be here. That's great. And I hope you will enjoy it because I realized when I researched you, and I have to come clean, I have not read your books, your book, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. soon to be books. I haven't done that, but I'm a member of a kind of a man group kind of thing, a few friends meeting up. Mm-hmm. And all of them know about you. <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? You have to get him on. <laughs> That's great. And uh, okay, okay, I yield. So I investigated <laughs> you a little. And then, son, I realized that you have a very interesting life. Yes, I do. And unfortunately, that means uh, 
because we do long form and today I want to do two things I want to do your book the one you have released yeah I want to do that in part two in the second half and in the first half I want us to just exchange ideas and muse around the whole topic okay um, so so let's make a deal if you enjoy this show having done it with me then after your new book is out you come back oh. and what we do then is we cover your new book plus we cover your life okay. because your life needs you know at least an hour <laughs> <laughs> well there you go boiling down that whole experience to one hour isn't too much to gotcha. ask for is it <laughs> all right i'm with you okay cool uh, also, going to warn new listeners about this. Uh, what we do, we kind of do what Joe Rogan does, but I didn't know about Joe Rogan when we began. <laughs> mm, oh, but really? We, we do long form conversational interviews. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people who are used to the, you know, prescribed one liners and then a lecture in reply. And they get uh, confused when they hear our shows because that's uh, our shows is like just to normal people as in life, mm -hmm. sitting down, having a conversation. That's it. Yeah, I understand. Now, obviously, I'm the host, so so you, I will be doing uh, questioning and stuff. But just be warned, uh, I may put on my own two cents if I feel they are warranted. Right. Or I may even challenge you if I disagree, but that's okay. This is uh, um, this is a safe space for disagreements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you got you, man. Understand? Uh, I, I doubt it would happen with you, but if it does, maybe minor things. But if it does, it gives you an excellent opportunity to make your case, right? So. Of course, yeah. I don't mind at all. Yeah, I know. Okay, so, um, and, and one more thing. I'm kind of old school. I haven't updated myself. You know, once I figured out how to get women, I kind of stopped updating myself on the scene, mm -hmm. which is why I don't know about you until I was made aware of you. So, some of my references will be very old. No problem. I know it all. Yeah. You were around, so, so you know. I was around, yeah. Yeah. So, as the listener have heard, you are one of the old schoolers in this field. And... Just so you know where I'm coming from, I put David Dada very high on my list. Mm -hmm. I haven't read and, and checked everyone, but Dada's info resonates a lot with what I already do and know. Also, I'm uh, sympathetic to David Angelo, and I, I've noticed there's like two trends, and I want you to comment on this. There's like two trends in this field. Mm -hmm. One trend I would call the manipulative, the ma manipulation style. Yeah. Which, uh, I guess the mystery method and stuff like that belongs there. And the other one I would call a transfer, no, a transmutation style. Mm -hmm. And I feel you belong in that one. I, I would say both works, both works. But the difference is that the manipulation guys are like robots and the transmutation guys are like they, they get more like naturals. That's my perspective. Now, do you have any views on this? Well, first of all, let me comment on you said David Data and David D'Angelo. You, you mentioned right? Yeah. The two. It's interesting because I did work with both of those guys in the past years really? ago. Wow. Yeah, years ago, I was I did a a seminar with David Data in Toronto. Long time ago. Nice. And I was on some of the early David D'Angelo stuff, his, his interviews with experts or whatever he called it. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. Way long time ago. That was back in, man, 15 years ago, you know, more than that. You know what? Then I've heard you because I heard that entire series. Yeah. You've heard me then because I mm. was on that, I was on all the series on, you know, and, and I did his live video series speaking in Chicago years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's, uh, yeah, I go way back in that field. And, you know, you mentioned that there's two kind of paths. One, uh, the path of manipulation and head games, I guess. And then the other one is a bit more what you call transmutation. Mm. And what's interesting is the, you know, we can, we can blame the pickup artists and that whole movement of, of getting in a girl's panties and three easy moves. <laughs> um, as a, as a, as a, we can denigrate it and say that's a bad thing, but the need underneath it was real. Yeah. 
the heart sickness of man was real. The, the loneliness of men was real. And so this, be, you know, the internet came coalesced with, with this ability to share this information and forums and stuff. And it just went crazy, you know, mm. and everybody started sharing ideas and then it went commercial with the commercial pickup artists and, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. But the, the, it went, it, it had a noble goal of, of getting men to recenter their lives again and understand their masculine edge. And it went, it went veered off to the side of, manipulation and and uh head games and you know all this kind of like secretive type thing which guys love because it's like secret codes and stuff you know <laughs> so i was there from the very beginning i was written about in in neil strauss's book which really launched this whole thing called the game i have to pause there i've finally gotten around to reading it and i was disappointed uh -oh. but that's because just because i mean if i had read it early enough it would have been like a Bible, right? To everybody, it was a Bible, yeah, back then. Yeah, but I, I read it like a couple of years ago just, so long after I've been there, done that. But could you remind me where in the book did you appear? Well, there's, he wrote an entire chapter about me. Jeez, and, really? In, in yeah, the game, the first In book. the game. Yeah, it's like chapter, I don't know, some page 64, 54, something like that, and it says, and basically has a heading that says, Zan was a guy who who arrived early in the scene for four years in other words four years while he was researching the book he never asked any questions he just gave answers and he's the the, the quote unquote the natural uh i can't remember exactly so the natural from canada and i think i remember yeah those quotes yeah and then there was a and then there was a a, a long thing i wrote about an encounter with a waitress that he caught he paced and made the whole chapter about that so <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember that too. Uh, for some reason, you've been a black spot, and uh, it does make sense because your stuff is closest to my. When you say you worked early with D'Angelo, mm -hmm. when I regard D'Angelo, I, I kind of see him. It, maybe it's just my impression, but he kind of started more like mystery and those guys more technique based and ended up more transmutation based. And I don't mean to denigrate either, mm -hmm. either those technique based things because. In my view, many people start off there, mm -hmm. then they realize, shit, this thing works. Yeah, yeah. And then they kind of mature and get over to the other one. So maybe there's room for both, you know? Of course. And, and I tell you, like, that's why guys will come to me and, and to my coaching, right? And they'll say, man, I, I wasted all those years. I spent all that money in boot camps and, <laughs> and, and I wasted all that, those years. And I wish it, and, and, but I don't see it that way. See, man, you, you went through that. That's the steps you went through your journey to get you to where you are now and the realization you, you're now. You had to go through something of that kind of understanding, you know? Mm, precisely. And so, so, and I know all those guys. I know mystery. And I know uh, anybody who was around back in 2005, 2003 and that kind of stuff, mm. um, the old guard, I guess you could say, the old school guys, I know them all and I know what they were doing. And it was... You know, now everybody's a dating coach that can make a nice, wet, flashy website, right? Yeah, and exactly. They, right? It, they throw money at it, and they have this. It looks like this guy's. There's, there's a ton of dating coaches out there who can give you the answer that you've been seeking to get that supermodel girlfriend, and they still live it, you know, in the basement of their mother's house. You know, it's like, <laughs> but, but they look good. Their marketing is great. Yeah. Back then, we weren't marketers. We were just guys who were excited, and. And my stuff has always been, I've never competed with anybody. That's why I was friends with Mystery and David D'Angelo and, and Tyler Durden from RSD and these guys. Mm. Because, and they would always like attack each other in various ways and say, my method's better. Oh, yeah. But my, but my what I was trying to understand was that was a lower level, you know, a lower level energy that, that, that underscores all of their, everything. So if a guy was wanted to have, you know, wanted to, to lose his virginity or get a girlfriend or find the love of his life or enhance his marriage. Any doesn't matter what the relationship status was. Mm. All the things that I talked about in, in back in those early days would be relevant for, for, for it all. It was a lower level thing. It wasn't competing with anybody. It was like a we talked about concepts that were because I'm quickly saying it. What fascinated me growing up 
and I was lost, but it will tell a story in another podcast, like you said, hmm. um, is I would observe guys who had, they weren't tall, they weren't good looking, they didn't have money, they didn't, and there was something about them that women were mesmerized by. And what qualities does that guy have? Yeah, the naturals. Yeah. So I spent my life trying to understand that and studying those guys and trying to and 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 what you realize is 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 um, there's a there's an underlying principle that matches across the board where where women and men are drawn to his energy, drawn to the spirit of him, his generosity, for instance, you know, and and his kindness and his empathy. And he's also a scoundrel. He also wants to bend the world over. <laughs> so that combination is rare. And it's intoxicating to women. Mm. And so that's what way back before the game came out or, or David D'Angelo was going, I was involved in this conversation and, uh, and, and I've never really changed my message all these years. It's been the same thing. It's been deepening and more articulated better, but it's been the same fundamental, wow, this is, this is how it can be. This is the way men are. And the way they think they should be. But this is, here's an alternative perspective, which is fascinating, which is, which is world thundering, thundering. It is, it is a uh, game changing and it's beautiful, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, don't give any spoilers away because okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to spend one hour exploring your path, your message. <laughs> okay. And uh, I have uh, some pointers for that. Okay. But, gotcha. but everything you said, I mean, even when I researched you, it really resonated because, like I said, I, I think I put David Day the highest in terms of mm -hmm. uh, the principles he's exploring. And I really felt, although you have a distinction from what I can tell in the way you work with this stuff, but you're still resonating, if you see what I mean. There's no, there's yeah. nothing, I wouldn't read or un understand data and then reading you and understanding you and thinking here's a conflict you see what i mean no yeah not at all mm. underneath it all it's just the, the desire is the same the sincerity is the same and i see this across the spectrum of men you know for years i've been coaching and, and doing very public speaking and i've interfaced with a lot of men and women over the years and and underneath it all there's a real sincerity that 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 you know and they go down the path of of you know pickup or manipulation or something like that because they think that's that's the answer mm. but they're, they're they really want to be a good person they want to have a good relationship they want to have someone who has devotion for them you know mm. just like we all do so yeah yeah and, and like you also say i've heard a few videos of you now that it's kind of been um, criminalized <laughs> in our day and age exactly and, and and you're on a mission to try to restore that it's the it's the man's right and we're going to get to that but i want to start off with asking you to help me debunk something okay because i've noticed that there's two and i think it's very clever to start at this end because uh, when i expose you to my audience now 95% uh, of them will have no clue who you are and w what this is about. Okay. And we have to start from the outset debunking something that I see two types of people are guilty of. What we are going to debunking is the attitude that this doesn't work. It's not possible. It's an illusion. It's oh, okay, proven. Yeah, because... It doesn't work. You can't, you can't just increase. Mm. I, I mean, there's people actually believing this and those two types. If I can be so superficial as boiling it down to two types, one is mostly males, mm -hmm. and those are very often academicians, so-called intellectuals, but I mean like square-headed ones, uh, those who mm -hmm. are, and, and I guess I understand it because they spend all their life religiously consuming a lot of uh, dogmas, and, you know, they have the, it's like a Catholic, really. If you're a devout Catholic, you've been in that school, and that's your whole life, right? Yeah. Something other than that will threaten it. And they are so stuck in their head that even if they are open five minutes to, okay, let's see if there's something in it, they really never go uh, out of their head to really, you know, transform as you would need. So that's the one type who are very biased against this. Mm -hmm. The other type is what I would call, and those are ma mainly females. Yes. And I would call them the neo-feminists, not the feminists. I respect feminists, you know, the right of women to be free and equal, no problem. I'm talking about the 
anti-masculine mm-hmm. neo-feminist movement, you know, those who want to cut off our balls. <laughs> <laughs> and those two types I see as the gatekeepers who try to scare and, and, and deflect people from exploring this liberation movement that you represent. Mm-hmm. Comments? Yeah, I mean, you know, in my study of the whole thing, and I'm not a social commentary guy, you never hear me talk about feminism or pornography. There's enough voices, you know, to mm-hmm. talk about those things. We take an, my idea is to take an end run around that, all those social there's so many screeching voices on both sides of the aisle. Men are, you know, trying to take back the power from women. Women are trying to stomp on men's balls with their heels, like you said, you know. And it's like there's a there's a there's a, a majority in the center who want to have a reasonable discourse, who want to have the balance of of, of feminine grace and masculine grace. So th- yeah, there's a real th- something's really gone wrong in the world. And my opinion is the world is bathed right now in a masculine energy, which it, and it doesn't have the, the, the counterbalancing beauty of feminine spirit to balance it. Hang on, I have to inject. Yeah. As I see it, it's the neg, it's the dark aspect of masculinity. That's correct. Not the positive, right? You, you agree with that? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, it's not, okay. it's not, it's not the good part of masculinity. It's the, no. it's the what you could call the toxic side of masculinity. Yeah. And so in other words, the women have become more masculine in their, in their attempts for this equalization you're talking about, right? Mm. They've stepped into that side, into those roles and everybody loses because we lose the power and and regenerative spirit uh, or power of the, of, of the female spirit, which is a rebirthing energy. It's a birthing energy for men and women. But it's a rebirthing for us. And we lose that because women have, have, have stepped away from that and said we want to step and you know, be more of this masculine energy. And, and the men are battling against it. So the whole world has this masculine tinge to it right now. And we don't have the life-giving energy of feminine uh, grace. Mm. And this is where – so you said – yeah, the beginning, yeah, we're, we're a crusader for this, and I'm a crusader for the concept of beauty. Hmm. And if you know, people ask me what's your book about, I would, in one word, I would say it's a, it's a, it's about beauty. It's about beauty of, of of a life well lived, beauty of the the feminine spirit, beauty of the masculine spirit, beauty of the relationship between the two and the polarity thereof. And uh, it's it's a lot of it's a battle and. And so what we do, you know, with ours and Murata, what I've been doing all these years is to go around that battle. Let them battle. Because, and, because you can't, I, I was on a radio show one time, a woman's, uh, a sex radio show, and she said, you know, I have to ask you the question. I ask it to all my guests. Um, what do you think pornography has done for our modern age and, you know, how it's affected us? And I'm like, um, well, I can, you know, I, I understand and I get it. That's a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, I, no, no, I, I said this. I understand that it, it has a massive effect on maybe our, our, our concepts of intimacy, mm-hmm. of our self uh, appreciation of our bodies, for instance. Maybe it has a, but I don't ever think about it or talk about it because there's enough voices talking about it. And they don't need to hear my voice talking about pornography right. or feminism. I don't go into that space, you know. Mm. I run around it and talk about what is, like I said, a life well lived. What is the 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 center of gravity of a man? Because I can talk to men because I'm a man, right? Yeah. And what is, you know, we're doing this, my young self, for instance. You're doing this and you could do this. You could have a different perspective this way. So it's a, it's a complete... I, I, we run around all the social issues. I don't have any social commentary at all anywhere I've done on YouTube. I, there's lots of YouTube videos of me <laughs> for years, right? Mm-hmm. My book, and we never, it's never addressed because what's important is how can we live a life of, of, of magnetic energy so that we, so that people meet you and think there's something about that guy. So women look at you and say, there's something about him and I don't know what it is, but I can't stop thinking about him. That's, in my mind, the, what I want to dwell on, that kind of thing. 
Yeah, that's that's what you want to help men attain that. That's right. Vibe, but you didn't answer my question. Okay, so I'll I'll go back to it, and that's that. Because you you went off on feminists, but the point yeah. wasn't that. The point was that I see the neo feminists and the intellectuals as gatekeepers against men who want to attain what you're saying because uh, they they claim no no this doesn't work. Ah uh, yeah okay. There's nothing you can do. You know what I mean. So it's the men that are saying it doesn't work or the women or both? Both. But you have one type of man who believes that. And that's okay. often the academics. You know, they try to ridic yeah. ridicule the whole yeah. uh, movement. Um, I mean, I, I understand that they look at the uh, manipulators and get disgusted. They feel it's not fair or whatever, right? Yeah. Be but it does work. That's my... Yeah. Uh, and I had a sexologist on, lovely girl. We discussed perversions and stuff from a clinical, psychological perspective. Yeah. And I thought she was aware that this stuff works, but she wasn't even aware. She thought this was like hyped or, or something. So I want no, you... No, it works. Right. Because... Because what it does is it, is it gets a man, you know what, I, I, I remember watching back in the day with they had boot camps. Mm. And there was a guy one time in Calgary, this is years ago, he was a dating coach that he came out and he basically copied all this stuff. But anyway, and I knew this guy. <laughs> that happens a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I knew this guy had never had a, a woman in his life. But he was a dating coach and had a good website. <laughs> Seriously, I knew it. No, no, I I suspect many of them being like that. So thank you for confirming. Yeah, it. but he he spoke a good a good speech and yeah. he had these he had eight guys signed up for a weekend in Calgary and I thought yeah. and he said you don't want to come along and, and tag along and I said yeah okay I, don't mention who I am let me just like hang around right so I watched mm -hmm. and I watched the awkward approaches that his that he was getting his guys to do and the things he was getting them to say and the women looking at him going um what and and, and trying to escape like the, trying to re grab his hand and, and or grab her hand and do some palm reading right there in the, on the sidewalk and, yeah. and the girl pull her hand back and run off and and i thought man i feel sorry for this dating coach because <laughs> These guys are all normal looking cool guys and they're going to be thinking, well, man, I paid all this money for this. But at midnight, at the end of the day, we all sat around this table and the guys are going to give their feedback on how their approaches went that day. Mm. And I was thinking, there, oh, here it comes. It's going to, they're going to say the truth of like, you know, it wasn't this good. And, you know, it, I felt awkward or whatever. And 100% of those guys, those eight guys said, you know what, to, to the coach, you know, I can't thank you enough. Mm. You changed my life. This is the best day I've ever had in my life. I'm thinking, what? Because all I saw was awkward uh, exchanges where, the, where, the, where the, the girls were trying to you know, escape from them. I'm thinking, well, how is this possible? But you realize for the first time in their lives, they approached women. Exactly. And they'd never done it. So they felt redeemed. They felt like I can get out and, and represent myself in some way. And so, And then you think, was that a bad thing? You know, was that a bad workshop? Uh, you know, your, your head kind of twists. So it does work because it gets guys out of their basement suites into the land of women. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, so, it's so beautiful. That story, that experience you had is 100% lined up with an old... Uh, I think it's a Buddhist or Taoist story about the fake guru mm. who makes the pupil throw himself off from a cliff trying to convince him he can fly mm -hmm. and but the thing is the pupil is so sincere that's right so he actually flies that's right and then the guru tries i'm, I'm, I'm really breaking ruining the whole <laughs> adage but when he tries to do it because he sees his pupil managers he falls flat yeah exactly <laughs> and dies. exactly and that's kind of what you've experienced in real life. I saw it. Yeah, there was yeah. a redemption in that in that workshop for those guys, and they felt they came alive, and they felt for maybe I can show up in this world. So that's why I never knock anything out there because you just never know what a man's experience is going to be, and and when they're sincere, you know, they want to learn something. Yeah. So it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. And and I think a clue to, uh, and I think it's good you chose that story to demonstrate that it works because. You know, you can have all the principles in the world. You can have everything is correct, which is even hard to get because there's no answer book here. So, yeah. but even if you have everything correct, I think maybe 80% of it is practice, is experience, is, is a going out in the battlefield. But that's correct. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for myself, um, I, I took a quick trip to Sweden today and I listened to an interview or a, a, a speech you gave. Mm. And you said something there that made me realize what my own breakthrough was. And you talked about showing up. Mm, okay. You talked about approach anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, although you felt those weren't the most important things. But to me, I think the clue for me was... Uh, because you said something, you can go out and you can ask 20 women and 15 will reject you flat and brutally. But maybe five will, and you don't even have to have a game, and five will probably be receptive. And that's how I became desensitized to approach anxiety, a rejection mm -hmm. anxiety, because I did that thing. Mm -hmm. And I realized if I had game, maybe 10 of them would say yes, but 10 would still reject me. But the difference between someone who has game and someone who, who is terrified is that the guy who has game doesn't care if he's rejected. So mm -hmm. he will just see, okay, I got 10 today. Mm -hmm. The other guy, he will say, oh, shit, I got 15 rejections. You see the difference of thinking, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's interesting. That's great. Mm. The truth is this. If a guy would clip his nails and comb his hair and put on some clothes and go out and approach 100 women... And say this, something like this. You know what? I, I just have to say this because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm 32 years old and I want to be more dynamic in my life. And I want to put myself out there more and, and, and escape my comfort zone. And I'm going to say this. I would love to have you on a date with me. I would like to go on a date with you. Okay? He said this to 100 women. Mm. He's going to get rejections because of marriage, engagements, schoolwork. I, you know, I'm not interested, all these kind of things, right? Mm. But he's going to get response that is favorable out of 100. If he went up to women and said this, I'm going to say this to you in all sincerity, and I don't mean to be offensive, but I haven't had sex in five years, and I would like to have sex with someone tonight. <laughs> out of the 100, three would say yes. Mm. They would say, you know what? Let's go. It's, there's, a, there's a, you know, and I'm obviously I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm generalizing, of course, and sure, I'm, sure. I'm exaggerating, but there's something in the sincerity of a man who wants to understand that stops all the games in, in place. And so, it, and, and you go through the spectrum from that, which is complete sincerity, to the games and manipulation, like aloof and I don't care, and uh, you're just another girl to me, and pretending you have options mm. that guys are taught to do, right? Mm. And if you just interact with enough women, you're going to get some girls in your bed and into your life. Hmm. You know, it doesn't matter their approach almost yet. Uh, yeah, I, no I noticed that about your approach that kind of stands out from the more manipulation guys that you emphasize not just beauty, and we're going to get back to beauty, believe me, but you emphasize sincerity. Yeah. I noticed that. The phrase I, I've always used way back in the day is honesty is the greatest aphrodisiac. Excellent one-liner. Yeah. Imagine this, because here's here's what a guy would do. He'll compliment a girl and say, "Oh, uh, you have you have beautiful eyes. Can I buy you a drink?" Okay. Mm. She's heard that her whole life. You have beautiful eyes. Her eyes are outstanding, right? Mm. But if I compliment her on her eyes, she's never heard it before. Because the difference is this: imagine a guy saying, "Oh, uh, hey, uh, you have beautiful eyes," and etc. But imagine a king walking through his kingdom. And he sees this girl, and she's got beautiful eyes to him. Mm. So what does he do? He will stop his train of, of, of followers. And he says, hold on for a sec. And he walks over to the girl and says, you know, I've never seen you before in my kingdom. I've never seen you before. And I have to say this to you. You have beautiful eyes, and I want you to know that. You see, there's something in that that lands. It's a one-way compliment. It's not a compliment that says, will you like me back in return? Exactly. Will you, will you give me something? Will you go to bed with me? Give me your phone number, any of this kind of stuff. It's saying, I'm, I'm looking around my kingdom and I see you. And I'm going to say this as a man of conviction. This is how I believe. I believe you have beautiful eyes. And I want to say that to you. And I want it to land to you. And I want you to do the, with that information whatever you want. You don't have to come. You don't have to like me back. You don't have to say anything back. You don't have to smile. But I said it because this is how I, I move through the kingdom. So it's, there's a, there's a, a there's a conviction yeah. in the compliments of a man who loves women, a man who, who he, he just, he's just saying what he likes. 
You're just saying, you know what? There's something. So if you say to, if you see a, a, a girl you like somewhere and you say, listen, I have to, I have to, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you girls, but I have to say this. And please bear with me, but I have to say this. I saw you from over there. I was with my friend Al. And I saw you over here and I had to come over and say hi because there's something about you that intrigues me. And I have to say that. There, you see what is a bunch, what you just said is a bunch of statements that land. Boom, mm. boom, with conviction. She can't reject that. She can't say, no, that's not true. There's no rejection possible because you're just saying <laughs> how, mm. how you perceive the world. I perceive it as this. You have beautiful eyes. And I want to say that. And I think the clue here, because uh, one of the things I've done in my own maturing in, in this field is to, and that really sold a lot for me, is to try to see things from the girl's perspective, because we all think it blind in our hunter perspective, right? But right. much easier, if you're going to catch a prey, and excuse the bad uh, <laughs> metaphor, <laughs> but if you're going to catch a prey, you're going to be a better hunter if you understand the prey. And so I've done a lot too. I've even had fake female profile online. Wow. Yeah, just to see. And I learned a lot from yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yeah, oh my course, God. Yeah, some yeah. of the men were so good. 99% were just horrible. That's funny. But some were so good. Wow. But here's the thing. The, what you just said will, from her perspective, be a single unique experience. Correct. She's never heard it before. Even though, no, she may have heard the things before, but the experience is unique. I, and that's the way I would finish that compliment. I would say, and, and I've done this. You, you say to you say to the girl because it's true. You have beautiful eyes, and I want to say that to you. Okay, that's two statements of conviction, right? Right. And the next thing I say is, and I know you've heard that your whole life, right? But you've never heard it from me before. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. what I say. I know you've heard it your whole life, so I'm disqualifying that. Well, I, you know, he's just another guy saying that, and she looks at you and thinks, I've never heard this before. Because I never heard it in that way from, from in, with this sense of, of conviction, I guess, you know, is the phrase I would use. Mm. So, yeah, it's like, I know you've heard it your whole life, but you've never heard it from me before. So now it becomes new and fresh. Mm. And it's real. Mm. It lands differently. I mean, it has to be real to be a unique experience because correct, girls yeah. have, they have some kind of sixth sense for bullshit. It's amazing. Yeah. They can smell our incongruity, you know, miles away. But uh, this also goes to show another thing, which is that you're kind of debunking some of the dogmas, especially in the manipulation path, because they are very concerned about principles, which they have to be because they're not transmuting themselves. They're just trying to stick to a manual that kind of works. Yeah. And so one of those dogmas is not to compliment. They kind of nag instead, right? That's right. They're taught not to do that. But what you're saying is, if I can regurgitate, it is that it's not about what to do and what not to do it's about how you do it that's true it's the spirit absolutely right it doesn't matter what you say in fact my opening my opening line for instance at a, at a in a bar or something like if i'm my opening line can be silence <laughs> yeah wow that's... just by looking at her uh... my communication is from my eyes and my smile Right. And so I can be standing, you know, I'm going to go order a drink, for instance, right? And 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 a, a, a girl comes up beside me to order next. And I can be looking at the bartender, look over at her and not say a word. And I've opened. Hmm. Not a word. Because because I, I really do believe in, in you know, and, and we can talk about that later. But subcommunication is the eighth wonder of the world. Right. And women are subcommunicating constantly to each other, to men. And men have no clue. They're like, it's like a radio station that they, it's like radio waves are flying around and there's no receiver. So they don't hear it. But as soon as you tune into the fact that women are subcommunicating with men all the time and they do it, they do it as part of their, their nature, mm. they're subcommunicating all the time. And when you start to pick up these, these radio waves, you think, oh, oh whoa, really? Women are saying this, but they really mean this? Mm. And, and so my, my opening line essentially is, is my eyes. But then, then you make them approach you or? No, because if, yeah, like, because like I'm always, I will go up, let me see this. How do I say this in a succinct way? Mm -hmm. I never cold approach, never. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. There's guys that make an entire uh, the existence out of cold approaching and learning how to go, for instance, on a sidewalk or in yeah. a shopping mall or something. I never cold approach. I always, 
I never approach a woman unless I think I'm 75, 80% invited. So, mm. so women are dropping signals. They've been dropping hankies for centuries saying, I'm available, please, you know, but, uh, but don't, I can't act like I am. Okay. Mm. So they've been, they signal their intent that they would like to be, um, they, they would like to have a nice relationship or meet a good guy. Okay. Mm. So I leave nothing to chance. So, uh, I don't cold approach. I don't walk up to a table for a girls. Hey girls, I got a quick question for you. I don't do that. But I let them know, but I let every woman who, who happens to cross my path or look at me in any way at all, I let them know I see you with my eyes, without saying a word. Eyes and smile. I see you and I see you and I see you and your turn will come. Don't worry. And then when I, what I'm looking for, this is a, a non approach approach sort of thing. And, and what I'm looking for, that subcommunicated, my subcommunication thing is intention, which is you're a pretty girl in a yellow dress and I would like to talk to you. Okay. That's what I'm signaling with my eyes. I'm s expressing that mm. directly and clearly communicated to her. And I look for the receptivity of that. And guys who have women in their life, the abundance of women in their life will understand what I'm saying on your podcast. They'll listen, they'll listen to this going, I get it. Mm. And, and what I'm looking for is the receptivity. The, in other words, I put the photons out there. I'm looking for entanglement, quantum entanglement, so that it comes back to me. It receives back and she will, if she's not interested or she's in a relationship or her boyfriend went to the bathroom and he's there or whatever, she will look at it, receive what, you, you know, the, the, the empathetic, respectful uh, notification I gave her with my eyes and smile and she will turn away. Hmm. If she looks back or, you know, plays with her hair or touches her, her necklace or something like that and glances back or she leans over to a girlfriend and starts giggling something, you're in. Hmm. And you have, and that's an invitation. So I go where I'm invited, but I make sure that I leave nothing to chance. Because if you just stand in the bar looking, trying to look cool, women will look at you and look away. They look. Away. So if you just, you're not going to get women approaching you unless you're, you know, semi-famous or you're like a unique physique or something, maybe mm -hmm. or, or some something that do anything. Okay, mm -hmm. like, but they're not going to. You, me too. I just guy in a bar that they saw. So I, I have to stop them, stop them energetically with my eyes and my smiles and, and I'm, what I'm communicating. And I'm actually saying it in my head as I'm looking at them. I see you, girl, and you're my type of girl. That's what I'm saying. This is great stuff. Uh, you're doing kind of, and, and this is so subtle that I think maybe, I, mean, I think maybe coaches should be your pupils, not beginners. They are. They are. Right. Because what you're doing here, and I just want to put it in my own words to help my listeners understand, you're doing a pre-approach thing. You're kind of explaining to us that, you know, it's like you have to pass the sphinx. Yeah. You have to see the riddles. You have to pick up the, the I don't know the word, but when you're going on a riddle quest, and if you can manage to answer the sphinx right questions, then you're in. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. That's what you're talking about. And that's very hard, especially for beginners and yeah. clueless man. You bet. But you know, once you start to realize that and when you become aware of it, awareness is curative. Awareness is the answer for men, for men, because they're trying to figure it out. If you become aware of what I just said, for instance, and you start to look for it, you start to look for the, you know, that women are subcommunicating. You stand and you look at a party or an event or art gallery opening and you just watch the way things move. You'll start to see these kind of signals everywhere. Yeah. And guys are not receiving them and guys are not projecting them. I, I I'm like a woman that way. I'm communicating. Sub, I'm sub communicating all the time. I can be at a table with 10 people and there's a, and there's a girl that's, you know, across from me to the right two seats and I can be talking or everybody can be talking at the table, communicating and I can, I can be communicating with her with, with my eyes that no one sees. Yeah. You said it's very subtle because I promise you no one but her sees it. Mm. Nobody. Mm. But how easy is it for guys to learn this stuff? I mean, it sounds like very practical and not so theoretical. Yeah, that's what I said. As soon as you become aware of it, you start to tune into. I'll tell you, here's a practical thing that your guys can try. Mm -hmm. And I tell this to my guys and they say, uh, is this. Imagine you see a waitress, you're going to order eggs for breakfast here with Al and you're going to have some breakfast, right? And the waitress comes up and she's cute. Okay. Mm -hmm. How would you 
compliment her on her on her smile and her dress, for instance? How would you compliment her and say, wow, your dress is beautiful? If you could say no words. Oh, no words. You can't say a word. Ah, good exercise, man. How would you compliment her and right. make her recognize that you love her dress and her, and her, and her smile? Right. There you go. Yeah. And guys say, well, what should I do? Should I figure it out? Yeah, yeah. How would you? If you had a gun to your head and you had to make this girl, if you had to tell this girl she was pretty and you couldn't use words, you could only use your, 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 your demeanor and your energetic field, how would you do it? Hmm. That's incredible because all the greats in history, I remember, you know, Casanova and all these guys, all the, the men who had abundance. Yeah, have you read Casanova? I've read it. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you read him? <laughs> That's the old I school. Did. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what he had was Casanova had this incredible subcommunicated energy. He wrote about it. Right. How he would, all the other guys would be prancing around trying to be the cool guy, trying to have the nicest car and, you know, you know, virtually back in Venice and whatever, right? <laughs> trying to be the coolest guy and, and, the, and the most powdered wig and the most, <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. the most money and the, and the most whatever. Mm. And he would hover around the, the outside watching these guys posturing. And, and, and he would, he, there's one famous incident where he, there was this, the, a, a Parisian uh, actress named Valville. And he saw all these guys at this, this ball, this, this, this uh, big party. And they were all hovering around because she was the, the hot one in town. She's a Parisian actress visiting and everybody was trying to nail her. Mm. And he sent, had a servant. He stayed on the outside and he had a servant send a little note to her that she opened up and read it. And it said this, Madam, I should like to begin an intrigue with you. Right. Yeah. In other words, our secret garden, you and me, no one needs to know. That conspiracy was yeah. fantastic. And she, and she left the party with him. He never said he didn't yeah. compete with the guys. He let them try and be cool, beat their chest, you know. And that subcommunication, that conspiracy, that secret garden hmm. is intoxicating to women and fantastic. Yeah, he he understood the feminine mystery. And although exactly. the culture has changed, and I'm going to ask you later about culture too, um, some things I think are universal across space, yeah. meaning geography, and also across time. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of more specific questions before we okay. expand to the bigger philosophy which I know you love to talk about and is, <laughs> is your thing right yeah. but I'm going to try to squeeze uh, a little more specifics out of you before we get there and in my relation with women I've often relied a lot uh, on talking I mean I can right. I can I'm smooth man because yeah, I I'm a very ver I mean I'm having a podcast right so you can figure that <laughs> if I if I just get the women's attention if she sincerely notices me and is interesting i'm locked in perfect but i had to rely on all sorts of bullshit openings and stuff like that if i really you know are going out of my skin right. to get someone and that's my weakness uh, a hole in my own i had to use the word but let's let's just call it a game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. although i don't look at women as a price and all that stuff they are human beings but what you just emphasized is I don't know about my listeners, but I got it. And I think this will help me big time. Huge, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. If, you, if, if a man can tune into what I'm saying and re really get it and really sit with it, I promise you his life will change. Mm. He will look at the world with different eyes and the world will look at him with different eyes. This is the underlying thing, you know, like this is, uh, well, I could go on. I, you, you know me, I rattle on. Or <laughs> so <laughs> that's okay. I'll I'll steer us back on topic okay, yeah. uh, once in a while. But you know, uh, the good thing with long form is we can afford many rants and uh, uh -huh. distractions. So that's okay. That's right. Now I want to um, bring this over to, uh, and this is because in my little man group, man K, we call it, is just a handful of bros. Okay. We have been dealing a lot with shit tests lately. Mm -hmm. And that's not like a big mystery for me, uh, although you can never get too expert on it, I think, because they are sure. I'm amazed how shit tests can come, you know, they can come in the weirdest ways. And it's also very typical for the kind of girls. But I, w I would like you, your inputs on 
first how to identify shit tests. I think that's the most important thing, actually, knowing what, that you're dealing with that. Yeah. And the second, you know, how to deal with it. Uh, it's very general, I know, but you probably... In other words, like a challenge, right? They're challenging you. Challenges, yeah. To see if you've got, got what it takes. Yeah, I don't know what term you use, challenge. Yeah. It's like seeing you can, can you take a punch, you know, and like, and, yeah. and, and, and or are you going to bow down? You know what? The answer to me is this. Whatever she says that's a challenge to you, mm -hmm. like, for instance, uh, you say that to all the girls or you think you're so whatever, you know, this, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, she says, you agree and make it worse. That's the answer. Right. You agree with her. Yeah, it's true. You probably say that to all the girls. Yeah, it's true, but I haven't said it to you yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you probably got girls in every city that, you know, I... You, you, you think you're this guy who's, who's, who's so good with women or whatever. And you, th you probably, you think you have girls. Yes, but I have room on Tuesday night for you. It's true. <laughs> okay. So, so basically you double down, but don't you have you to double down? Yeah. But don't you have to do that with a glimpse in your eye? Of course. But there should never be anything the, where the men go wrong is they're having a date with a girl or they're, or they're bantering with a girl in a bar, for instance, and they're having fun. She's laughing sort of thing. And then they, they kind of lean into a little, say something a little sexual or dirty, right? You know, a little hint, a little joke. And she goes, well, why would you say that? I don't appreciate that. Why would you say that? Immediately the guy goes, oh, well, no, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I was just trying to be funny. I didn't. In other right. words, he starts explaining him, himself yeah, yeah. and defending himself. Never explain or defend yourself to a woman that you just met ever. Mm. She's not your wife. You know, mm. you don't have to explain yourself. You agree and make it worse. Did I say that? Yeah. Well, because I said that and I'm, I'm going to say this. In other words, if it's congruent for you and you're not where men fail and where they, they fail the so-called shit test is the woman will see, is he going to bow down and apologize and defend himself? Mm. And you never, if you didn't grab her boob or do something truly offensive and you were, been, you were sincere and you're having fun and you were joking, you didn't. And you, your, your heart is, was in the right place. Never apologize for her seeming offense. Women are great at pretending to be offended. Mm. But they're not really, they're just seeing who you are. Seeing, that's a shit test. Mm. If she's a, if she's truly a mean girl, what we would call a bitch, and she's just not a nice person, turn around. Or having a bad day. Yeah. Let's cut them so slack. Turn around and walk away. Yeah. Turn around and walk away. She just self-selected herself away from your life. You're, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is your energy should never change. If you're having fun, you love life. You're the king walking in the kingdom. You love girls. You like this girl who's now talking to you. You're excited because, hey, and my buddy, here's my buddy and this, meet this girl. Who's your girlfriend? Come talk to us guys for a second to come tell us a story. You have this great energy of, of wanting to increase your experience and increase their experience in the presence of you okay that's sincere right and it's fun mm -hmm. and she, and you get att attacked or try, try to get knocked down uh never never take that into into what we try and do is we start to explain or our energy down shifts that's what she's looking for they don't even know women are not master master psychologists they do it by their natural spirit and nature is like is to just see what you're made of yeah. Maybe it's an evolutionary thing. I don't know. But you, but the, pro, the, the the where men fail is trying to explain himself or defend himself. Uh, keep your spirit the same. Keep laughing. Keep having fun. Keep winking at your buddy. Keep winking at her girlfriend and say the same thing. Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. No, I want to I wanna back that up because, like I said, if you put yourself in the women's shoes, you can understand why. Now, you used the excellent metaphor of the king out yeah. in his kingdom strolling around. Now, imagine you're a girl. Ten times a day, someone pretending to be a king will come up to you. And you have to find out, is this guy full of bullshit? He's just a stable boy try, uh, pretending to yeah. be a king. That's what she's doing. She's trying to, uh, you know, remove your th your crown to see if it sticks. Yeah. And and what you're saying is you have to be congruent. You have to be able to back it up. No, I am the king of this kingdom. So yes, but you also, you also explain it to her. Like, the word is wrong, explain, but you... I leave nothing to chance. So I, I, if I compliment a girl, you have the most beautiful eyes I've seen in two years or whatever it is, right? Yeah. I, I will immediately say something to the fact of you've heard this before, but you've never heard it from me. Right. Right. So what I'm doing is 
is I can say all these things that other guys can say and they go, oh, yeah, here's another guy just trying to pick me up or he thinks he's a fake king or whatever. But not the way I say it because I say I'm not like other men. I say that to women. I'm not like other men. I look at the world differently. I'm the, I look at you differently. I say these things. That's the king's statement. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I leave nothing to chance because right. if you show with your actions you're different. Right. I say to women, I'm not, I'm not like other men you've ever met. What do you mean? Who do you think you are? Well, do you want to know? Do you really want to know? Because I'll, I'll spend five minutes and I'll tell you. Hmm. I, I've been trying to understand. So, like, there's a, there's a, there's a, it's, 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 and I tell you this, I, I know this for, for certain, and we can go into this another, uh, another, another time. But I was so insecure and lonely, trying to be cool and aloof when I was young, hmm. and I. And what I've learned out of that is just to speak your truth. Yeah. You know what? There's something about you I like. I would like to date you. I would like, I would like you in my bed. Yeah. What an opening line is that? You see, it's got conviction. It's got empathy. It's got respect. It's got kindness. It's got invitation. She can't reject and say, no, you don't want me in my bed. Well, yeah, I do. I do. I would like that. But you can want something different, my dear. It's up to you. I'm just not. Yeah, but I mean, as soon as you have a dialogue, you're in, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people shouldn't be afraid. Uh, it's great. Uh, the worst thing you can do is actually ignore you. <laughs> that's the worst. In my book, that's the worst thing. Even that. Because as soon as you start, you know, if you have the banter vibe, then it's just up to you. If you're not interesting enough, then go uh, transform yourself and become interesting. <laughs> but Al, re re remember what I, what I just said was I had no banter. I said, that's my open line. Right, I, right. I've never met you before. I was with my friend Al over there, and I had to come talk to you because there's something about you that I just I can't I can't resist, I and I wanted to come say hi to you. My name is Anne. You see, that's mm -hmm. an opening line. There's no banter. She could still look at you and ignore you, and t or turn her back. But at least I don't think she would do that after uh, after that approach. Well, there you go. There you go. But she never heard it. <laughs> you know, just the name Zan itself is so interesting. <laughs> she can't help it. Zan. Oh, oh, wow. Like with that E N. You know, you, I think you have her. Yeah. Well, By the I, way, I want to ask you about that. Is that a Romanian name or? No, my first name is Jonathan. That's my middle name, Zan. My first name is Jonathan. My family and my girlfriend, they all call me Jonathan. And so. Oh, okay. Yeah. But publicly, I'm known as my middle name, which is Zan. Yeah. No, it's not Romanian. I'm Canadian. Ukrainian. Exactly. But Zan with an A. Zan with an A, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, all that makes sense. I'm with you so far. So I mentioned culture. Now, there is, I've been traveling a lot uh, in my life. Right. And I've noticed that some stuff, I often kind of suspected that a lot of the PUA stuff works best in a modern Western culture. Uh, I'll tell, I'll give you one example. If you go to India, yeah. you'll notice that Indian girls are kind of where the British girls were 100 years ago, 150. They're, they're in the romance age. Okay. <laughs> you can see it in yeah. the Bollywood yeah. movies too, you know. So... I guess there are universal triggers, universal things, and I, I guess being honest, congruent, beauty is one of them. But wouldn't you agree that some stuff wouldn't work in some cultures? As I, I don't mean necessarily your stuff, but just some of the stuff out there. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like I, I wrote an entire book about women, and I've never been to Kazakhstan, for instance. So mm -hmm. how, what do I know about women in Kazakhstan? I'm gen I generalize, you know, and I'm talking about the Western experience, which I'm Canadian. I live in Europe. And so, I, I, yeah, there's some things that may not cross cultures, for sure. Right. And... And, and so on the, on the culture side of things, some cultures are highly Catholic, for instance. And so you meet a girl and she's living with her mother and she's waiting for marriage because, and so you think, well, or, I, there's no white night stands in this, in this country, right? And in another country, you might have. Wrong. Uh, yeah, because like in Norway, for instance, I've, I've been to Norway, Norway a few times. It's like oh. what, what, what I was told there was the, was the women told me. That because because it's so expensive in Oslo anyway, yeah. people will drink before they go out in, in, into the evening. So they start drinking at six o'clock, and by the time the ten o'clock comes around, they go out. They're all hammered, and this is what I heard from the Norwe Norwegian. So, it's true, yeah. but that's not the reason they do it. Okay, but anyway, okay. So the, the time they get out there, everyone's drunk. Yeah, and in Scandinavia is what I heard. They get drunk and they and they stumble into each other's apartment. They have drunken sex and yeah. and. And and now they're in a relationship, uh, kind of like a. That's what I was told. I mean, this is maybe 
seven, eight years ago. Uh, well, you, yeah, you can risk that. But uh, I think it's more usual that the next day the girl hates you and I re regrets everything. <laughs> That's more typical. Okay. Yeah. Where, where is Romania? In Romania, what the women told me here, yeah. contrasting to that, so you're talking about cultural yeah. differences. There, in Romania, the women said, you know what? Men are always trying to marry us. And I said, what do you mean? They said, well, they always want commitment. And, and we're just... I'm thinking, what? In every other culture I've ever been to, it's the women wanting women, and the men are trying to date. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's different stories about culture and and cultural history, and you know, and when I'm in Taiwan, it's a complete different thing than if I'm in Cape Town, South Africa, right? Or or Colombia or Brazil, you know, these places I, I've right. wandered in my days, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you've been all those places, then you at, at least you have to have picked up on universal uh, principles. Yes. And the universal principles are the ones that I documented. That's correct. Mm. In, in all cultures and all across, because you know what? Women can have the strong feminist bent and men are decrying the, 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 uh, what they would call the, the perversion of the feminist Western woman. Okay. And how it's, it's, it's lost. Yeah. But underneath it all, underneath it all, men want to, to have this. Men want to have the knowledge that they know they have what it takes. The same thing they've wanted since they were little boys. And women want to know that they are seen and recognized. The same thing they've wanted since they were little girls. So underneath it all, I, my thesis is, my belief is that all of the, the things that women have always fundamentally wanted because of their feminine nature is the same through cultures and time. In other words, they have this I'm generalizing because some women say that's never been me, but I, that's okay. You're an outlier. Mm. But in general, they have the sense of the mother instinct, of the nurturing instinct, of the of the the storytelling, life giving instinct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And men have this this. Here's an example. Since we're ram rambling, I can rant. Yep. There was a study done, and this this will describe the difference between men and women, and it's 100 percent accurate. There's a study done where they had um, mothers with a little girl, a little toddler. Okay, they took a mm -hmm. hundred mothers and a hundred little little toddlers, and they took and put them in their room, and, they, and there's cameras in the room, and and the and the researchers are going to watch it. And the only thing, that, and inside the room, was all these toys. There's toys on shelves all around. In the center of the room was a coffee table, the small table, and in the center of it was a toy cow. Okay, a cow. Mm -hmm. And the instructions to the mother was. Your little girl can play with anything in the room, the dolls and all this kind of stuff, but she cannot touch the cow. Do not let her touch the cow. <laughs> right? So right. The, the mother comes into the room with her little girl and she says, okay, little sweetie, you can play with anything here. The dollies are nice, but you can't touch this cow. Hmm. And now it became the object of Attraction. desire. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the little, and here's what they, they filmed and they observed it. The little girls are playing with a doll over here. And they glance over the shoulder at the cow because it's the object of desire. And then they glance up to their mother's face and the mother just has to raise her eyebrows and they look back down to the doll. Mm. Okay. Mm. So they playing around the room with all these things. They really want the cow and they would look at the cow. Then they look at their mother's face and their mother would just give her a little bit of a, a look. No, you're not allowed to do it. And they would turn away and play with the doll again. They did the same experiment with little boys, mothers and little boys. And the mother said the same thing. You know, son, you can play with anything here, all the cars and trucks, but you can't touch that cow. Again, it became equally the object of desire. Men and women are the same. We have this object of desire. Equally. Okay. Hmm. It was equally the one he wanted. Hmm. But the difference is this. The boys headed straight to the cow and the mothers had to pull him back. No, I said, no, you can't have the cow. And never once did they look at the mother's face. Huh. So the difference between men and women, and this is why we think women have so much more social knowledge than us, because they've been reading faces their whole lives and we have not. Right, right. We're all driven towards a goal. And the goal is equal. That's the goal of, equal, of, of feminism. We want the same accomplishments, the same, you know, careers and this kind of, we all have that toy cow we're after. But the difference is men do it independent of others and go thrusting toward it. That's our thrusting driving nature of the masculine sexual nature okay mm. and women want the same cow the same great things in life but they want it in the context of relationship to others they want others to not to not to approve but to they want others to to gather around it does it make sense yes huge difference
That's the difference. It's interesting. Men. men just are thrusters. And so the difference between men and women is men uh, perceive the world as something to bend over and thrust into. That's how we, we want to careers, uh, women, uh, jobs, uh, projects, uh, art. We want to we want to bend it over and have our way with it. That's what that's I mean, generalizing again. It's a sexual thrusting nature, right? Mm -hmm. And women are have receptive nature. They receive. I'm very much generalizing here. I'll get stomped on by feminists, but I don't care. They, they the spirit of women is to receive men into them, into it, uh, uh, that that's that thrusting nature into them. Yep. And they're both powerful. They're both equal, but different. You see? Yes, I'm um, somewhat of an expert on polarity. I, I don't mean like in, in the game, but in general as a principle. In everything, yeah. from magnetism to you name it, and it is true the masculine nature is centrifugal, correct, and explosive, whereas the feminine is centripetal, and um, you know the the feminine energy seeks the center, so she's receptive, whereas well, the then. masculine energy seeks to expand the center. It goes out. That's correct. And and I want to give a clue uh, in symbolism. Uh, my background is esoterica, so people wow, you can excellent. just uh, study the symbol of masculinity and femininity. First, you have the circle with a arrow out of it. That's Mars, right? The symbol of yes. masculinity. And the arrow should you really start in the center. So it's a symbol showing that we're trying to conquer and expand the borders. Right. And that's also the traditional uh, role of man in history. Now you look at the feminine symbol of Venus. There you will notice a cross uh, top of the circle. Really, the cross should be uh, put in the center of the circle, oh, okay. wow. which is another feminine symbol of Mother Earth, which is a circle with a cross. And that's a symbol of mm. trying to seek the center and that's totally congruent with what you're describing now translated to psychology yeah and this is symbiotics and that kind of thing right or semiotics right yeah that's interesting and another interesting thing you said something uh, when i listened to you today in the car you said something about the difference between sameness and equality right i know you're not a social commentator but I i'd like you it's such a great point could you just give that to before we move on Sure. I mean, like we, we're all under this so-called third wave of feminism, 60, 70 years of, of strong, more than that, obviously. And, but, you know, this modern era of feminism and the goal was noble. The goal was, was equality, you know, and, and all these years later, a century later, whatever, we don't have equality. We have sameness. Mm. And there's where we're, uh, I, in, and I promise you, I will get feminists that say, that's not right. I don't agree. And stomp, stomp, stomp. Mm. I don't care. Uh, what, by that, I mean, it, it has to be said. What we're missing, as you said it, is polarity. And instead of polarity, which is the great magnetic poles attracting each other, mm -hmm. okay? Mm. Uh, in, in their both equal strengths, strengths, they're, they're, they're both equal. But they have this polarity, this, this, this counterbalance, this yin and yang. Instead of that, we have sameness. Men are more like women, and women are more like men. And and the attempt to blend it all together into this one, yeah, uh, homogeneous uh, type of golem, yeah, goo, mm. you know, primordial soup. But going back to the beginning of evolution, we were primordial soup. We're going back to it, and it's like we've lost. We've all lost something. The women have lost something. The men have lost something. And this is why there's there's aggression, antagonism. Destruction, suspicion, jadedness, uh, hookup culture, the whole thing. Mm. Because we're thinking, yeah, you know, everyone's suspicious. Where are we going to be in five years? You start to date a girl and it's like tentative because I was hurt before and she was hurt before. And now so we're going to be very cautious and, and suspicious, you know, and, and judgmental. Mm. And we're judgmental. To be judgmental of, of someone I think is the opposite of generosity. And it's, it's the worst quality a man can have. And the worst quality a woman can have is to be judgmental of someone else. You know? Yeah. Some of our listeners, unfortunately, uh, not 
too many, but some of them I know are into the Magto thing and they are incels. And I think mm. it's important to bring out voices like yours because I think you're an antidote to that very misunderstood. I, I mean, I can understand it. It's a gut reaction to the extreme neo-feminism, but they are failing just like the neo-feminists. They are making a war. Yeah. You're actually a peace, uh, broker you're trying to see how we can work together yeah, so that both can get something out of it and those guys are they're they're turning in that direction because they have no help yeah exactly they, there's no messages for men they're clueless all the messages are for women out there and so this comes out and the pickup artist movement was the first message for men to saying, hey here's our secret society guys let's do it this way yeah and now this this uh, the the uh the MGTOW, however you say it, it's a, it's a message for men and men saying, I want to be part of something. I was, I was abandoned. I was abused. I was lost. I was lonely. And now I can feel I can be, I have an answer. I can be included in this. So it has attraction, yeah. but it's, it's so that, like I said, the sincerity underneath it is good. These guys that are listening to this, that might relate to that. Uh, their heart could be good and they want a good relationship. They want to stand on this earth and, and, and have a good experience. But they have no opportunity. They don't know how. They never had. There's no social instruction. There's no, and 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 they meet women, and women are mean. And they meet men, and men are saying, "Yeah, women are mean." And and so so what they do, and, and they listen to movies, and they get and they worse. listen to movies and romantic comedies, which yeah. are, are you know the, the nice guy gets the girl in the end, which is false, yes. right? Yes. So all this all the stuff they've seen and the na- whole narrative is is destructive for them, and so they think there's no other way. But their their hearts are sincere, not all, because some guys are just, you know, want to watch the world burn, you know. Yeah. But some women just want to watch the world burn yeah, too. Yeah. And you gotta cast them out of cast them out of your out, out of your out of your presence, like the, the avenging angel and guarding Eden, you know, you have to cast them out. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. No, um we're soon gonna take a quick break and go over to part two where we explore your book. But I want to say to those guys we've addressed now that you're kind of the Jordan Peterson of uh, <laughs> romance because he helps people like that, but not specifically in terms of relating to gender, but you do. And so I, I really encourage the guys who are scared or angry at the feminine to just give this a chance because I think at the uh, deep inside, every man wants to be like the sultan in the harem, right? Yeah, you know what's funny? <laughs> no matter how bitter you are. <laughs> exactly. You know what's funny is Jordan Peterson is Canadian from the same small town area that I'm from. Really? Yeah. Wow, was, what's in your water? <laughs> I want to drink it's that. It's in our water and I'm almost the same age as him. Right. And so I'm just a few years younger than him. And so he grew up, he wrote in his book, uh, I can't remember what it's called, The 12, 12 Steps or whatever. Yeah. He wrote in his book that uh, that he grew up riding around in cars in small town Canadian towns, mm-hmm. pulling Mainers d- down the main street. And I know it very well. It's the same water, the same food, same everything. And then he went off to become a, a you know, this professor and I went off to do other things, but we, we're from the same geographic and, uh, environmental thing. Funny. Yeah, but, but the thing with Peterson is, is, is his post professor stuff that's interesting. He's become a liberator. That's right. And you are kind of the same thing, a liberator. There you go. Yeah. Cause I, I do feel like I'm a crusader, a crusader for the, for the redemption of polarity, the redemption of masculine edge, which is, which is completely being, being, you know, vilified yeah. by mainstream media, society, feminism, that, that masculinity is toxic and it's not toxic. Okay, it's not. It's 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 my. I'm a crusader for that, and I'll stand on any platform. Say that. Well, there is. I would say there is a toxic aspect of both feminine and masculine. But it looks to me that in this corporate world we're living in, they want the toxic version of both. You know, the bimbo. There you go. And yeah. the the wife beater. Yeah. And where is the light side? And I will call you more than a crusader. I think a better description, if I may be so bold, is to. Uh, name you a uh, knight of the sacred feminine. Feminine. Oh, I like it. I like it. I accept that. Yeah, a grail knight. Oh, uh, you are wow. actually a grail knight. That's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it. We feel like we're on an adventure. We're on a vision quest. You know, we're trying yeah. to, we're trying to reclaim something for sure. My my, you know, 
my whole thing with Arza Murata is the the underlying thing is restoring beauty. We talk about yeah, we, we, we're not going to get to that, I promise. I just want one more trivial topic okay. and then we take a break and then we go to your stuff. And that's the nice guy. Mm. We have to beat up on the nice guy because I think <laughs> that's one of the worst uh, diseases out there among men. Could you just address that to, of to convince those who have no clue what's the problem with the nice guy? And the nice guy, he's like, again, he's sincere and he thinks he's watched movies. He's, you know, he's heard all this nonsense fed to him. And he thinks that if he just buys more flowers and writes more poetry and is just available for her and <laughs> sending her long, witty te texts with lots of smiley faces in it, she's going to fall in love with him. And, yeah. and the problem is a guy being nice is, is that's a beautiful thing. He's kind, he has empathy, respect, okay? That's a good thing. The problem is, is when they feel entitled because of that light niceness, yeah. and I'm not the first to say this, obviously. No, no. To her body or her experience or something, you know, he feels entitled and he feels offended when she does not give him that shower him with blessings, okay? Mm -hmm. He feels offended and pissed off. Like, how dare she? I'm doing all this great things. And look at her. I picked her up at the airport. I drove around. I went shopping with her. I helped her with this. She needed some money. I gave her money. I bought her drinks. You know, I, all this kind of stuff. And, 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 she, and she just she gives me a kiss on the cheek and runs off with that guy. Mm. That's, I promise you, that nice guy energy is, is the toxicity of masculinity. That's the toxic masculinity, the nice, sensitive guy who expects and demands and passively aggressive moves through life and never, ever, ever expresses what he truly wants. And he's a big manipulator. Manipulation, that's toxic masculinity. And it's so strong. It's everywhere. That's why people think masculinity is toxic because all these nice guys who are pissed off at women, pissed off at life, entitled and thinking that they should, you know, how come I don't get sex when I do all these nice things, quote unquote, nice things. I, I could go on about it. Yeah. Um, there's a great book by by uh, Robert Glover, No More Miss the Nice Guy. And every guy should read that book. I touch on, on on my book too, but I tell you, it's like, it's a wake up call for men to stand. And, and it doesn't mean you go to the other side, which is asshole energy, which is just jerk energy. No, no, not becoming a bad boy. I have to no. inject here that D'Angelo kind of distinguishes between a good guy yeah. and a nice guy. And I think that's a useful uh, terminology. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah. So nice guys, nice. It's not. It's it's not a good thing. Kind and and good guys, like you said, are great. Mm. They have they have generosity of spirit. They're good to the people in their life. They're good to the women they meet. They're good to their their friends. They they want you to have. And they are the best leaders, are they not? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. There you go. Okay. Okay. We'll 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 rest with that then. So let's take uh, a couple of minutes, and okay. when we come back in part two, we're gonna go deeper into all your stuff, your stuff. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So see you in a couple of minutes. Yeah. You bet. All of our files are free, and will remain free. If you like the show. You can show support by donating $1 to help with expenses. Just use the PayPal link on our website, YouTube channel, or Facebook page. Thanks.